from the sewers, this is the Turtle Power Podcast. This is your audio source for all the news, reviews, and insight into the world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now join your hosts, Brian, Alex, and Darby. Nova, Chevy Nova, oh, yeah. excellent. Yeah. 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 Now it's time for the Turtle Power Podcast. Wow, what a season one finale, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the Turtle Power Podcast. Uh, episode 18, uh, coming to you here at the end of August of 2013. Uh, Which, by the way, is 17 more episodes, more than I thought we'd do this. <laughs> that was more like more like 13 more than I thought, so... Uh, but, uh, yeah, welcome back, everybody. Welcome to all of our new listeners. Uh... Um, I'm eating, so sorry. <laughs> As always with me, and Darby I'll be and drinking. Alex. As always. Uh, well, guys, uh, you should have show notes uh, in your inbox. Stop it. <laughs> I believe we got critiqued. We got to send an, uh, an email from, I can't remember who, it, uh, I apologize, but <laughs> saying we needed to be more organized. Well, here you go. Hey, there are the notes. Look at that. We got it. Oh, did you really send them? Yeah, he really yeah, sent Yeah, I really sent it just now. <laughs> so, uh, Should yeah, we're it? back. We're back, and uh, we are here to talk about the Nick Turtles Season 1 finale uh, and Season 1 as a whole. This is going to be our big uh, Season 1 roundup uh, <laughs> episode. So, um, uh, we're going to... Damn it, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> we're definitely going to talk about uh, Nick Turtles this episode, so uh, and we're going to be very spoiler heavy. So uh, if for some god awful reason you haven't watched uh, season one uh, or the finale, Last uh, for me. yeah, <laughs> please please do so before listening. Uh, but watch and then come right back. Uh, we're also going to update you all with uh, the latest TMNT news. Uh, fresh from the pizza oven for you. Fresh from my email that Ryan just sent me. That's right. Hopefully fresh you guys can read PDF. Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, that's uh, that's going to be uh, the main focus. So uh, you know, let's let's get right into it, guys. With the news. April O'Neil, Channel Three Eyewitness News. <laughs> really, Ryan? <laughs> Guided meditation voice already. <laughs> hey, it's it is ten twenty p.m. Oh, yeah, I've been so up exciting. since Let's six right in the morning. I'm I'm drinking coffee right now. I'm not, I feel seduced. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not Mister uh, uh, Three Beers In over the, in Denver. Hey, just because I'm three beers in and two hours behind, actually, that does make me better. <laughs> <laughs> Nice, nice, and uh, and Alex just came back from a religious experience with fantasy football. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh my goodness! I just had a cream filled popsicle. That's all. Was it uh, orange? Oh wow! Um, it better be wow. orange. What flavor is brown? Cuban. Uh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's chocolate, but let's let's move on. Oh, right. <laughs> um, uh, first off, uh, definitely, like, I, I quickly mentioned at the beginning, um, shout out to all our new listeners. Shout out to our new followers on Twitter, uh, including a couple of, uh, of, of uh, specific uh, people we'd like to mention. Uh, Mr. Christian Lands, the Woo. voice of Zephyr and Fishface. Oh, fun. yeah. He gave me a retweet. Holla. Thank you. 
<laughs> uh, is now following us on Twitter, hopefully listening to the show. Well, he's probably going to unfollow me now after that, but probably. that's okay. That's all right. Uh, and also, hey, this was this was an experience that I had was um, – so I watch yeah, – my, my wife and I, we watch Conan all the time. We always DVR it and end up watching it the next day or a couple of days later or whatever. But uh, a stuntman that's always on there is named Stephen Ho. And uh, oh, he's been on there for yeah. years. And, uh, Donnie. Yeah, all of a sudden, I guess just because the, uh, you know, the turtles are getting big again that – I guess, you know, big in the – general public i should say uh that uh he just all of a sudden says oh yeah by the way i played donnie in uh, the second and the third movie by the way i'm well aware of that uh and so yeah, i didn't know that uh and so and they show like a picture of him with the the suit on and everything and and then they proceeded to have Conan put on a uh, Michelangelo mask, and because he always comes on there and, and does like uh, stunts and stuff with. Uh, he was so awful with those nunchucks; it was awesome. <laughs> he almost killed somebody <laughs> in the first round. Yep. Uh, you can right go on our Twitter and, and catch that video. Uh, but uh, yeah, so and uh, he he sent us a tweet too. So uh, uh, shout out to uh, Stephen Ho. So. Uh, but, uh, let's move into some, some proper news here. Big news, uh, this week is tomorrow. Sorry, Darby, just for Xbox 360. Out of the shadows. Yes. It's, 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 it's here. It's, well, I mean, in an hour and a half or so. Um, <laughs> Joke's on you. My roommate has an Xbox 360. Did, are you serious? <laughs> wow. You get very excited like there. That's awesome. That's great news. An hour, an hour and a half? An hour and a half? So you actually have to wait until August 28th. I don't because I'm two hours back. I don't, yeah, I don't know how that works. Do you, like, if it's just Eastern and then you can get it, like, when it turns midnight Eastern? I don't even, I'm I guess we'll sure. find out here in an hour and yeah. a half. Or I'm not sure how it works later. out with, uh, with, xbox i know how the psn does their updates but so that's awesome man so we will get to all play together okay i wasn't i didn't think we were going to be able to right away because i'm uh, selling my xbox so <laughs> <laughs> well uh really quickly uh the uh, ign debuted a uh a video a boss trailer uh where they revealed all of the bosses for the game uh so what they showed was amazing. First of all, Baxter Stockman with a gigantic three-headed super mouser. Uh, amazing. Amazing looking. Um, so secondly, they showed Karai. Uh, and uh, it was similar style. Uh, I should say, I should mention all three of the looks of the, the, the three uh, villains are uh they all look fairly similar to what they look like in the Nick in the Nick series. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, uh, lastly, of course, shredder. Uh, but, uh, I did want to mention a couple things. One, when they show shredder, uh, it looks like there's elite foot ninja in the background. Like uh, the versions, they're from very the similar. Series. Yeah. From the, from the two K three series. So that's pretty awesome. Um, mm-hmm. They are in uh, the Nick Turtles version of Shredder's lair, though. It, it, it looks almost identical. Um, so, uh, and the other thing I wanted to mention, too, was that the voice actors, they, I don't think they got any of the voice actors from the show, which is fine. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, the that was one cool thing about... Uh, uh, <laughs> Turtles in Time reshelled was that they got the 2K3 uh, actors to do their voices, um, but uh, in this version they chose not to. So you know, whatever. It's not gonna kill me. I mean, it's not like I'm a huge fan of Jason Biggs doing Leonardo anyway. Dude, that three-headed mouser looks ba man. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. Wow, mm-hmm. absolutely. Uh, the only thing I'm a little worried about. And I'm, I'm already getting worried about it. Uh, it was just sad, but uh, that they only have three bosses. I really hope this game isn't like an hour long. Uh, <clears throat> I I would rather it be 
<laughs> you know. It's a downloadable game. Yeah, I know. It's fifteen it's... bucks, bro. It's gonna be like it's gonna be like four hours long. I know. I'm, I'm very... It's gonna be like four, maybe five. <sighs> yeah, if you suck at it. Right, and, and it's going to be arcade style, just like any arcade game you used to well, go to when you were a kid. You yeah, that's arcade true. Game. That's true. Yeah. I'm I'm going to end up playing it it's over be and over. It's going to be absurdly hard, again. so you die a million times and pump forty bucks worth of quarters into it. Exactly. And, so yeah. there you go. That's true. I got to think about yeah. it like that. And they did show. So we we tweeted out a couple of different gameplay videos, some preview videos, uh, yep. both showing the the normal style of play as well as what they referred to as an arcade mode. Um, so at least it's going to have that aspect as well. Uh, and then you're going to be able to do you know four player co op uh, online for all of those modes. I think you can do two player local co-op and then mm-hmm. four player online did uh, you guys see the 25 minute uh, just kind of throw it, the 25 minute gameplay trailer uh is, nope. is that the one that that i tweeted out or is that a different one um i, it, I didn't see the one I, you tweeted out but yeah there was like a 25 minute gameplay trailer I think which was that's, insane yeah i think that's the one i saw where it shows them going through like the kind of warehouse like junk like uh with a bunch of crates like the big like storage yes. crates yep, yeah that's the one yep, yep, yep. yeah it, the game looks amazing um, i mean the way they did it really smart with switching between characters you can just switch on the fly if you're playing by yourself yep uh, why you would want to be anybody besides donnie i have no idea why well, it, it, I, see i mean donnie <laughs> obviously is still going to be the most elite because of his weapon type not because of who he is but no, uh well, they, no. they uh, were but, uh, so but smart game, about it. It might be a little Chicks. different. It might be a little different in this game. <laughs> I, I see I see other characters having more advantages than Donnie. And, Poor sorry. Alex has nothing. I'm just like, okay, Jason. I'm just, Leo, Leo's <laughs> – I'm, I, look, I'm, I'm ignoring that. Um, <laughs> Leo's going to be faster than Donnie. He's going to have close to the same range. He's going to be sick. Yeah, so. that's the, that's the thing that sucks. They always know that Donnie is so like OP in these games that they always have to give him a slower rating because otherwise, why would you be? It's like, look, Donnie <laughs> is so amazing. If we don't make him somewhat slower, nobody else is going to pick Raph or Mikey or Leo. There'd be no reason for hey, it. Now I can tell you right now, Raph looks amazing because of all the uh, the wrestling and the yeah. the Muay Thai. Uh, that Muay looks. Thai just like so much fun you just really raf just gets in there and really beats those guys down um and then mikey he is more of the button masher character from oh he saw the nunchucks mm-hmm. just scream button mashing absolutely yeah. and it's it they they straight up said you know uh it, it mikey's weapon is the weakest which is in actuality truth too uh yeah uh but or the uh, garden hoe Side, either way, I mean. <laughs> uh, that you know he's able. You know, he, even though he's his weapon's not the you know the weakest, uh, he's the fastest. So it's just button mash, button mash, button mm-hmm. mash. I mean, you're just jumping all over the place. He's the quickest character too. So I mean, all, they were so smart about designing these characters yep. and their play. Oh, I cannot wait. So. Um, so for all of our listeners, uh, be on the lookout. We'll uh, follow our Twitter feed. We're going to be uh, doing some gameplay videos. Uh, thankfully, Darby will be able to join us. Um, uh, I'll... Alex might not if he sells his Xbox fast enough. Right. <laughs> Wait <laughs> for a also, month. Also, on, the, uh, on Xbox Live, um, they have um, TMNT uh, Out of the Shadows uh, Avatar characters now that's true good point and uh on see i'm not quite sure how you how i got it from the i think from twitter but uh there's actually a way on the on your playstation 3 that you can download a nick turtles uh theme cool for Uh, free or yeah free Um, really yeah i'll uh i'll see if i can find that i'll uh i'll tweet out a link to it cool Let's see if i can find that I'll make a note of that all right so um so be on the lookout we'll uh we'll be uh sending out some some gameplay videos here uh in the next couple so weeks leo just destroying and wrecking everything <laughs> and uh hopefully i'll be able to integrate our voices in there and everything and uh 
and uh yeah i can't wait it's it's gonna be so much fun we're, we'll have a whole month on on xbox and then we'll switch over to ps3 and do it all over again on there fantastic so uh let's move on to movies well, let's go news. ahead and push that back if you will please <laughs> <laughs> I like what you did there. That's nice. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, I mean, this is not that big of a deal, but uh, screw, screw it. Okay, screw it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Alex has something to say on this. Look, side. they're trying to say they're they're trying to to say it's because of they they don't want to compete with these no name movies. I'm mm-hmm. sorry. I, I believe the list set has – one of the movies about dinosaurs and one of the movie was about, I don't know, some Pixar crap like it always is. You know, some kid lost hey, his dog. Hey, dude, Pixar hey. is not crap. No, no. Pixar is not crap. I love Pixar, but what I'm trying to say is that they're using it as an excuse. And I don't even think it's Pixar. I think it's DreamWorks. Um, either way – the real excuse is, is Transformers, the Transformers 4 release date. But they're not trying to say that because they're not trying to cause controversy, controversy between Michael, any more controversy with yeah. Michael Bay. It's absolutely Transformers. Of course it's Transformers. Come on, man. We're not stupid. Well, not that in stupid. The, in, their defense, <laughs> in their defense, I am genuinely looking more forward to How to Train Your Dragon 2 than this Michael Bay Ninja Turtle movie. No, no, absolutely. Have really. you seen How to Train Your Dragon? It Absol- is amazing. Yes, I did. The kid lost his leg. It was awful. <laughs> have you seen the tra- Have you seen the trailer for it? The teaser for it? It's awesome. Did he get another leg? Just, lo- just watch it. Just watch Prosthes- it. Uh, I mean, was it a prosthetic or like? I, I don't care to watch Toothless the Dragon. Dude, you just know. watch the teaser. If the teaser doesn't catch your attention. In the 15 seconds that it lasts, like, then I'll say, all right, whatever. But all right, so I watched the movie How to Train a Dragon, and I that I was mean, uh, that was a, a, a Jay uh, Baruchel, right? Uh, yeah, that guy, Jay Jay Baruchel. Yep. Yeah, the uh, same guy in every single movie that he's like Michael Sarah, but before Michael Sarah existed. Right. <laughs> I got <laughs> I got no emotion out of it. I thought the kid. Then I'm glad. I'm actually glad soul. he lost his leg. I wish you he would have lost soul. both legs. Alex, you have no soul. <sighs> oh man. And toothless. Just like all Spanish people. What? Toothless. <laughs> toothless was cute. He was a cute dragon. I'll give him that much. He's yeah, adorable. So anyway, apparently they're already in the pre-production for How to Train Your Dragon Three. That's right. They are. Wow. So anyway, Ninja Turtles. Ninja Turtles. <laughs> uh. So, uh, yeah, they moved it back to April, or August 8th. So everybody update your calendar. <laughs> in case you've, uh, you're like me and you've already put it in your calendar that far ahead. Uh, Are we going to talk about Miley Cyrus? No. God, no. No. <laughs> but, like, at least this article, at least, at least the Hollywood Reporter actually straight up points out like, oh, by the way, the Ninja Turtles was going to interfere with Michael Bay's other movie. So, like, they kind of call him out on that bull crap as well. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, things could always be worse, you yeah. know, not much. But, I mean, they could have casted Ben Affleck. As Donatella. Oh. <laughs> Jason Biggs as Leonardo. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, you know, in a, besides this, we really haven't had much uh, movie news lately, have we? <clears throat> um, no news is good news, I think, when it comes Pretty to the much. movie. So, I mean, the news we got was like, look at all this product placement. And that left us all really upset. So, yeah. Yeah. Not to hear anything for at least a month is a good thing. Yeah. I mean, there's been no leaks. There's been no no anything. It's It's been really quiet. I don't know if they're done. Does that mean they're done filming? Does that mean they're in, in post-production? Or are they, are they in um, – are they just being a lot better about <laughs> not letting people with cell phone cameras and – into the set i'm not sure <laughs> i'm pretty uh, sure they crack down after that but yeah. I, I don't i mean Ooh. it's still an open set for the most part well in certain spots but i don't who cares at this point yeah. i don't i don't I, I maybe for for the sake of content for the for the podcast i care a little bit you know but i really don't care i mean what's her name is pregnant again so yeah 
you know. Did Raph impregnate Megan Fox again? Probably. Did we cover that last episode? I don't even know. I don't even care. You know, <laughs> she needs to go like Miley Cyrus and just go away. You stop, man. Look, I got Miley Cyrus on the brain. I just watched that stupid video. I don't even know why. Why did you watch it? Because everybody's talking about it. I don't. I did not. I choose. I chose not to watch the VMAs. And then I chose to wa- go back and watch that video because everybody was talking about it. And then I don't even know why I did that. Here's the thing. It's... I haven't watched it. I know exactly what it was uh, even before it happened she because I've seen her twerk. video. What she's doing is not twerking. No, well, that's fine. But God forbid this country talks about stuff that matters. Hey, this matters. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I've seen her video for that song, and it's it's crazy enough. So uh, I you would have seen the video for that song. Well, it was I was. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't even matter. All right. <laughs> There's nothing you can say that would possibly justify that action. That is true. Thank you. All right. So in addition to and this is I guess this is movie news. Um, so uh, I don't know if any of you guys listen to uh, Rob Paulson's podcast, the uh, Talking Tunes podcast, but um, you know he brings Definitely out a lot. Definitely should of, if you don't. Yeah, no, you absolutely should. Um, uh, he actually uh, retweeted one of my tweets uh, about that uh, uh, just the other day. But um, uh, he had on a, a voice actor um, a few a few days ago. I guess it was a little longer than that, maybe a week ago, uh, that uh, I've had the pleasure of meeting Mr. James Arnold Taylor, uh, probably oh, m- w- most well-known for uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi, the voice of Obi-Wan from uh, Clone Wars and uh, video games and everything. But uh, in addition, he's the voice of Leonardo from TMNT. And uh, at the show, uh, because he does all, Rob does all these shows live now um at the show he uh was able to uh or i guess not he was able to but uh one of uh i guess we'll just say it the biggest turtles fan there is michelle ivy was in the was in the crowd and uh she was uh, able to ask a question to uh mr at jat actor and uh i figured it was it was it was pretty pretty interesting and i wanted to share it with everybody so let's go to that clip right now (laughs) uh my question is on the ninja turtle movie that you worked on uh you all recorded together is there any fun stories from the recording booth of working on the movie bloopers anything you know yeah yeah, the funny thing about that was here we we got the jobs. We were very excited because we were going to be replacing Rob Paulson and Townsend. Uh, Take a number, Sean. Uh, and, uh, no, uh, so we get into the studio and we're all going to read together. The four of us. It was Mikey Mikey Kelly played Michelangelo. Mikey Kelly is a fantastic actor, uh, and uh, Donatello was of course Mitchell Whitfield. Right. And Mitchell, Nolan. yeah, and Nolan North was Raphael. And so we get into the studio, and we're like, this is so great. We're together as brothers. You know, you know what it's yeah. like better than anybody. And they go, okay, guys, 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 ch- ch- no, no, no. We got a lot of work to do. We got to get it all done in a very short amount of time. So you can't be talking in between, okay? Uh. <laughs> and we all went, it's like, jeez, are you kidding me? A big turn to punch bowl, <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, you're doing cartoons, for Christ's sake. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we, we kind of were like, we had the little dividers between uh. us. And we'd peek and we'd pass notes and stuff. Did you actually record the whole thing in one session? We did it in uh, two sessions, but then, Holy but, uh, but dig this. So we do that, and Nolan and I go through the whole scene together. So they, we got to, you know, the big fight scene at the end, if you've seen, yeah. in, seen the film. Uh, and it's great. We got to really, oh, that really was good. good. It was even better. Uh, Kevin Monroe, the writer, did such a great job. And then what happened was the, the Weinsteins bought it and made some changes. They wanted to put some celebrities in. But, yeah, Eastman and Laird, Eastman and Laird fought to keep us as the yeah. Turtles. They said, these are the guys that when you hear them, you hear the Turtles. You don't go, oh, that's, you know, Ashton Kutcher and Seth Green and David Spade. And, you know what I mean? You get, No, these Spielberg are just... Godfrey. Oh, look! Donatello! What have you done? I mean, no, so, uh, <laughs> 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 That's right. What's the with you, Tiles? <laughs> <laughs> but so they were great. Uh, they were great. 
there because they were like, no, keep them as the voices. So um, the Weinsteins bought it, and they decided they wanted to change the tone of it. They wanted to make it more dark and different and everything, and they brought in celebrities. And, um, and a lot of voice actors that lost their gigs on some of that stuff. Because Nika Futterman was all the bad gals. Has she been on? She's so great. She's, she's wonderful. She's not. i got to get her on. She's another girl. She's, she's played Ventress in the Clone Wars, if you know the Clone Wars. And she's just got this amazing first kid kind of sound, you know. But um, so, anyway, so we go to do it, and they bring us back in. Here's the good part about it, though, about the Weinsteins doing that. We had to re-record the entire film. But it was already animated, so we had to ADR the whole thing oh, over our own performances, and to, to yeah. change it, you know, like so. If I went, all right, finally some excitement. It was all right, finally some excitement. It changed, yeah. right? So they just wanted everything. They were like, Christian Bale, you're Christian Bale, Batman. And, I thought, <laughs> and the thing is, I said to him, I said, well, you know, I'm Christian Bale's double for Batman, so that's good. You want me to do him? No, I'm just saying that, James. Stop it. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I was, I was his double for the first Batman. Are you kidding? Yeah, he was, he was right here. My parents were killed when I was very young. He was just, you know, taught me to be afraid of the dark. And, you know, all that. <laughs> but then he would just, like, in the second movie, what happened? He became this every time he talked. He's like, Clarets? <laughs> you want a Clarets? You know, I mean, honestly, I, I didn't get it. But, um, so, uh, so we did that. So we changed it up, but we got to work twice, which was good. And so yeah, that, was, that was fun. But, um, yeah, we had, a, we had a good time. And the four of us are still, I think, very close to that. I'm telling, you, I'm, really there is a, I'm telling you, there is a fraternity. I, I feel so fortunate not only to have been there at the beginning, but uh, Townsend Coleman and Cam Clark, as you mentioned, Barry Gordon, are still very good friends of mine to, to this day. And about a little over a year ago, we did a thing here where they had the original Ninja Turtles. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Sold the joint out and signed yeah. stuff, earned a lot of money for uh, uh, Operation Smile. And um, it's so gratifying that this, and no pun intended, this is such an evergreen Right? Yeah. So actually, people are still, they, they still dig the turtles. What's not to love about the turtles? I'm telling you. And um, of course, when I was a kid, it was about Flo and Eddie. <laughs> that was the turtles singing Happy Together was the turtles. That's right. Um, who, thank you, Michelle. Who else had a question? You did over here. Sir. Yeah, so that was pretty interesting. Uh, I I didn't know well, a couple of things I didn't know. One, I didn't realize that they had to... Uh, redo the entire audio, the entire, the entire, <laughs> so they originally did it uh, in two takes, which is amazing. They were two sessions. They did the entire movie in two sessions. That's, that's pretty amazing by itself. But then, uh, yeah, that is pretty crazy. Uh, months later, uh, when the Weinsteins took over the project and, uh, they wanted to change the tone. They had to redo the entire film. I, that was totally well, new. Lost me. two days out of it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, the the other uh, interesting thing is uh, where they talked about uh, bringing in some you know celebrities to do some voices. I mean, I, I mean we. We all know who's in that movie. <laughs> so, uh, you know, some of those choices, I think, were probably for the better. Um, maybe some not so much. But uh, the, in fact, I know one of the celebrities. <laughs> uh, and, and more on that later uh, in a future episode. Um, uh, his story as to how he got his voice on TMNT. Is that a tease? That's a pretty good tease. I think so. Um, but, uh, yeah, anyway, so I wanted to share that with uh, with everybody. So, um, all right. Out of the movie news and into – are you ready? Are you guys ready for this? Our season mm -hmm. one of the Nick Turtles review. Okay, guys, what do you want? Omelet pizza or pizza omelet? What's the difference? Okay, you call my bluff. All right, guys, let's uh, let's talk about this finale first. Let's let's start from the end, and then we'll we'll come back around to the beginning. Um, first of all, uh, now a little backwards. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We're, no, we're going we're uh, Kill Bill style. End. Kill Bill style here. Okay. Uh, no, uh, that wasn't Kill Bill. God. Yeah. 
Yes, it was. Where they show the, how the... Kill Bill didn't start at the end and then went <laughs> to the beginning. Yes, Kill Bill. It shows the the bride and she's been shot, and we have no idea how that happened. And then they go back to the beginning and show that her. was far from the end of the. Entire... Well, okay, so that's not the exact end. Blink but that's was how... about four hours away from oh the end. Oh my god, though, that's how. Tarantino does his movies. He shows a little clip from near the end, and then you go back to the beginning, and then yeah, okay. Anyway, uh, I to the end, bro. <laughs> oh, I hate you so much. Um, so first of all, the uh, uh, for anybody that watched it live, uh, the uh, spoilers begin now. By the way, <laughs> good point. Um, Ciro actually was live tweeting during the finale. Um, and so you can actually, um, go back in time to, uh, uh, team and team master, the, uh, the official, uh, Twitter feed there from those guys. And, uh, you can actually see what, you know, what he was tweeting during the finale. So that's pretty cool. Um, it was an interesting, it was a, a Thursday night, wasn't it? It was a, a weird weird choice uh, um, for the finale. Well, that's because but... they wanted people to... It was easily remembered. 8-8 eight, eight at 8 o'clock. Right. Right. Yeah, I guess so. Um, the... Where do, I mean, where do we start with the finale? Um, I... let, let's start with the big thing. Karai. Splinter's daughter. Who, did, who saw this Who saw this coming? I called that about 12 episodes ago. You can go back in our archives and yeah. look it up. I called it. I called it. Did uh, Alex, did you see this coming or was it more Darby mentioning it and you kind of kept that in the back of your head? I mean, it felt, it kind of felt like it was leading up to it, but I, I mean, there was no definitive yes, this is going to really happen uh, until it really happened. And uh, it's kind of like losing your virginity. <laughs> There's no definitive yes until it really happens, and it it was I mean it was it was just great. Um, I like how I, they did it because yeah, yes. you know, I called that so many episodes ago when Splinter turned to April and said, "Oh, my daughter would have been about your age." I was like, "Cry, yeah, right there, cry." So, Jessica, my wife Jessica, uh, she actually um, well, I rewatched the entire season one. Uh, and Jessica watch it with me and she didn't see it coming. Um, she was, she was actually she surprised kept up with the turtles as much as we have. Well, so. yeah. And no, no, no. like, and that's a good point. It, if you had missed that one line, how you said like that, that one line, Oh, she would have been about your age. No, if you had missed that one line, which she may have. Uh, she probably did. She was probably playing Candy Crush or something, or Peggle. Uh, would would you have still figured it out? Probably not. Like um, I said, like that line when he said it, I was like, "That's it. That's because right. because you don't really know how much time has passed in the in this turtle universe for." Amato Yoshi, you know, like he kind of says like, yeah. "Oh, Sh- Shredder killed my family." And then he just wound up in America somehow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It doesn't say, like, how long until after he got the turtles and all it's, that. So. It's, it's quite interesting with the uh, flashbacks. But they're not, you know, they, they're kind of like uh, art renditions of flashbacks. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, is the, It shows them as if they're, like, living in, like, the, I don't know, 1500s or something. Feudal, feudal Japan. Well, feudal Japan. That's Japan what it looks hasn't like. caught up with us in the times yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah Japan. So, yeah, they're really they're falling the back, anyway. they? They're, like, stuck in the 1500s. Well, I mean, certain, <laughs> certain, certain areas of Japan, let's be fair, just like certain areas of, in the south, Okay. <laughs> haven't progressed as much as the rest of the Okay. That is okay. correct. <laughs> uh, okay. I'll, I'll take that. What um, I do like, though, is um, uh, it, it kind of adds another twist to the Leonardo Karai, as if bestiality relationship wasn't a problem. It, it is now a oh, man. Which ties back to the South, as uh. I was saying. <laughs> 
So for all our foreign listeners, the South of, is a region of the United States, which has a... Uh, the, the, Florida doesn't count as a South. No, Florida, actually, Gainesville is like right on the border of the South. Right, right. Uh, anything South of Gainesville is no longer in the South. It's... <laughs> <laughs> Darby knows exactly what we're talking about. That's why he's laughing. Um, yeah, and see, Darby never had the the uh, the joy of living in Gainesville. So, yeah, we know. There, it's it's not so some, much there's... Gainesville. It's it's everywhere around. Yeah, Gainesville. and that's true. Good point. It's it's outside of the center of Gainesville. Once you exit Gainesville <laughs> proper, you're in the south. Oh, it, look, I mean, it, it, Moonshine if there's a county, it, and... the counties are Dixie County, Union County. Look. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is, though, whole new twist way. on the Cry Leo relationship right there. Oh, absolutely. It's going to circle absolutely. back around to the actual topic at hand. Okay. So, um, so I, I guess I saw it coming, but. Because I, I didn't hear it from just you, Darby. I heard it from other people, too, online, where a lot of people speculated this. So it wasn't a surprise to me. I was kind of waiting for it to happen as well. Um, so it's – I guess it would be a more of a – it was actually – it would have been more a surprise if it didn't happen. Sure. That's I was waiting good for Good way to it. put it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about this fight scene. Uh, oh, Splinter such and Shredder. a great fight scene. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, Splinter was just unleashed in that fight scene. So, oh so let, even before they get to it, right, Splinter is insane. Rolls up like He's Jedi got the hood on. Yeah. Oh, man. So awesome. With the, with the, with the robe. Oh, I mean, he's just straight up kicking take, some. Ass. Taking, what was that? Ass. Yeah, there you ass. go. It's kicking some <laughs> ass. <laughs> it's a callback. Um, <laughs> they're, the, I mean, the, the foot soldiers are flying everywhere. Everywhere. The, it, best, the best was just how scared Dog Pound and Fish Face were to <laughs> face him. Right. Like, like, the turtles, all four of the turtles are scared to face just Dog Pound, let alone Dog Pound and Fish Face. And then they're so, just trembling at the thought of like, oh god, spoilers so, coming. And the interesting part is that Dog Pound is describing to Zephyr Fishface that uh, you know he's he's telling him all about Hamato Yoshi. He's telling him all about his skills and everything. And so obviously the Shredder has prepared him for this eventual fight. He's informed him about his his fight style. He's informed him about. Uh, his his background uh, that that was actually really interesting. I didn't think that they would go through with that, you know, with that aspect. But uh, even so, they were, you know, they were obviously not prepared enough. Um, and then they get into the actual fight uh, between Splinter and Shredder. This is different. This was this was unlike any <laughs> Splinter versus Shredder fight we've ever seen before. What I liked about the fight was, uh, <clears throat> you know, you watch the preview that they kept showing, and they literally show, like, a two-second clip of Splinter just wrecking Shredder's business. And I, I told my roommate who watches the show with me, she's trying to get into the Turtles, I was like, look, this fight is going to just be Splinter just wrecking Shredder. Mm. And then apparently they waited until five minutes into the fight for Splinter to just lose his cool to just – Kick the crap out of Shredder. So she was like, "Oh, there it is." <laughs> like that's the part Darby was telling me about. Yeah. Um, so, dude, Alex. That fight. Alex. Yeah. Hey. Talk. Talk to me about Splinter. Talk to me about the the how they they turn him. They made him a rat yeah. in this fight. Oh, well, he's running on all fours and just running around Shredder. Like a traditional sewer rat. Oh man, I'm I'm rewatching the fight scene as we speak again because oh, you know what fantastic. I thought of all over again. It's you fantastic. know what I kind of thought of, and Ryan, you'll probably appreciate this. Is uh, 
in the Clone Wars, in mm-hmm. the Clone Wars movies, yeah. when Dooku was training General Grievous, uh... he tells him to use like unorthodox styles to throw his opponent off. Mm-hmm. And when Splinter started running around like a rat against Shredder, I I thought back to that. Like, wow, yeah, he didn't even know. Like, remember, Splinter didn't even know that Splinter Shredder didn't Shredder know that didn't Splinter know. was a rat. That was yeah, mm-hmm. that's right. Until his hood came off. Yep. Mm-hmm. So suddenly, Splinter has this whole new strategy that he can use against Shredder. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. and he. He put he it went to primal, work. man. He went super primal. Like he when he lunged at Shredder, you know, and just went straight at him with his mouth. It's freaking insane. It was, I think, the first time we've ever seen Splinter. I mean, besides his tail, we've seen Splinter use his tail before, but where he really took advantage of his abilities as a rat. Uh, we've seen we've seen him use like the smelling and. And and the tail, but like that's really it. Like we haven't. He seen used him. the tail to like trip the turtles right. as a joke or something yeah, like that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Whereas the turtles, when they fight, you know, they they're using their abilities all the time. They you know dropping the head into the shell, uh, using you know the shell as like uh, a shield kind of thing. You know, we, a battering ram. Yeah, we <laughs> yeah, um, uh, bulletproof shield. <laughs> no, no. In in an episode <laughs> where they tried to escape from. The Krang's like poisonous room. They had Mikey go into his shell. That's and right. Used him as a battering ram That's to break right. open the cage they were in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Absolutely. So it's uh, it it was very cool. It was very very cool to see them really make Splinter a rat in this fight, and yeah. uh, uh, I was blown away. I I really was blown away by it. So so where does this Splinter stack up in all turtle history? I I've said it before. I like I genuinely like this Splinter better than the other ones. Yeah. Like if you watch the '87 series, that Splinter's kind of a joke compared to this one. Absolutely. And Absolutely. and the 2003 series, he's he's good at fighting, but he just doesn't have like as good of a presence as this Splinter does. Yeah. Like remember when Leatherhead just kicked the crap out of all the turtles. And Splinter beat him with one hand behind his back yeah. and barely moved throughout the entire fight. Yeah. Right. Like, with all the, the slight um, moving of his feet, like the slight exactly. stance he changes. Exactly. He moved like a foot totally away. Totally move his, his CG and then be able to like totally take him down. Yeah. Exactly. And like that to me was how Splinter always should have been. Mm. And then the fact that Splinter and Shredder go toe-to-toe after Shredder just did what he did to the Turtles. It was like, this was the showdown you wanted to see. Yep. Yeah, you know, that's interesting because the original animated series, you know, he goes from human to mutant. Uh, but, you know, he's not that old when he's a human. He's maybe, what, in his 40s, 40s early 50s or mm-hmm. something. But when he he turns, he's he's more treated like he's like a like an old man, you know, like seventy eighty, right? They're they're it's like they're ba- they're basing him off of rat ears as like opposed a gra- to human like ears. a grandfather or something, figure, right? You know, um, and then of course to the two K three series, he's and, and you could say even into TMNT um, that you know he's he's certainly more active. He's more of a fighter in those in in those incarnations. Uh, well, I guess we should mention the original movies too. He's the first three. He was more of that grandfather character. Um, but uh, this version now he's he younger. Can, he seems younger. Oh, you absolutely, know? absolutely <laughs> younger. Uh, but it's more than just the fighter. You know uh, the the. That's I really like the 2K3 series version of Splinter because he got in there, you know he got in there to fight, but this version is is more like I'm not just a fighter I'm a master of fighting. Does that make sense? Like exactly, he's a ninja master. He's not just like getting beat up by random foot soldiers. He's owning them to such an extent where it's like even Shredder. Really doesn't have a comeback for him except for the whole daughter thing. Yeah. So 
so uh just fantastic uh you know you get you go over the i guess if you can and i guess it took a little bit of time for us but once we got past the the, the changes in his look you know i mean the you know, I think his character looks better in on the series than it does in the action figure. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, you know, it does. You get over the fact that he, he doesn't look like the other versions of of Splinter. But yeah, it's fantastic, fantastic. I like how this Splinter looks. Do you? Yeah. I, do, I I thought I said that earlier. Like I like he looks. Like a formidable ninja master instead of a frail. Well, I mean, old just man. like like the the like his head and his color and stuff like the. Yeah, the, I, I like sh- that. I like his eyes are red instead of just like black pupils. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I like that. What I about, like how uh, he's actually taller than the turtles. Yeah, I know so a lot he's of people actually can... more of a fatherly figure to them. Like he looks more like a fatherly figure because he's a foot taller than them. A lot of people have can you know said you know this is the fox version. Of uh, of Splinter, where he looks like a fox. Would you uh, agree I don't with that? See that? No. I I can understand why people would think that, but I don't see it. I don't yeah. really see it. Well, that's good. I mean, no, yeah. I think people are just talking out their ass. <laughs> that's, well, that's, that's that's what the internet's for, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. For people. Um, let's yeah. let's talk about the the Technodrome. <laughs> Did you notice? Okay, I have to point this out right yeah. away. The Technodrome, it had an eye. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I thought that was so cool how they had that eye on the Technodrome. For, for me, though, as soon as I saw it, I said, oh, that's the Technodrome from Turtles Forever. Now, granted, it doesn't look exactly like it, but it's pretty I damn close. It. I can see what you mean by that. It's the one that, you know... Uh, the 2K3 Shredder, he, you know, he learns about the original, you know, 87 Shredder and Krang. He learns about their Technodrome and then he, uh, you know, updates it and everything. And he turns it into the super, his version. you know, his version of the Technodrome, which, you know, flies and uh, it's got spikes on it and everything. And it's got like that one main, like... Uh, in this one, I guess it was like pink, but I think in the Turtles Forever it was red. But that main like center glowing section that could shoot out whatever. So um, yeah, I don't know. That just that was interesting. Um, I, I don't know if they used that for uh, inspiration or not. But um, I mean, with with Ciro, you know, who knows? He, he's he he has a lot of uh, inspiration. Um, uh, we have an uh, article uh, that we'll talk about here in a little while. But um, and uh, so in the Technodrome, we have the one and only Crane Prime. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do like this suit better than the '87 series. Really? Okay. So you like the suit? Yeah, yeah, it, the it, you know, 87 series looked more like Roseanne Barr as opposed to just sounding <laughs> like Roseanne Barr. <laughs> that nice. is very true. But um, but me and Alex differ. I liked Roseanne. Alex, not so much. It, look, it's it's not that I, I, I hated it. It's it's not to that level. I, I, I just – I hear her laugh from the show every time I hear her – talk yeah it's 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 just difficult to get over it'll i'll get over it's not that i hate her it's just that i don't see it yet i don't or i don't hear it yet but it'll grow on me i mean just like the entire series did and ended up being phenomenal i'm i'm not gonna be i'm not gonna hate on her too much not yet anyway could have been whoopee (laughs) oh god i think i think i said it best Mm. in the episode where they announced like the episode that we did when they announced that Roseanne Barr was going to be crying, I said, well, if anybody's going to be this giant blob, <laughs> like Roseanne Barr is the voice you want for it. Yeah. Um, but also, also, I kind of – now stop me if I'm the only one who had this feeling. But when April was strapped to that machine and Krang yeah. is right in front of her yeah. and, the, 
and and the tentacle showed up. Was I the only one that got like a hentai feeling out of this? <laughs> oh, like, no, seriously, it shows it shows April like, well, what are you gonna do? And then like a close up on Krang like smiling. Tentacle show up. Close up on Krang smiling, and then April screaming, and I'm like, <laughs> okay, that was a little. <sighs> yeah, and I, I I mean. Watch would the scene you, again. You'll totally would, think it when you see would it. You be, would, you would, have been, uh, would you have been opposed to a hentai, April? Well, I figured Frank? that was the only way they were going to get the energy they needed out of her. I, I mean, that's that's plausible. That is hentai. Like, that, that, <laughs> that, that, that is... That is w- would you have been opposed to seeing it? I mean, that's... I guess that's no, no, I don't... I, I would have been very opposed to seeing it, considering <laughs> it's a kid's show. Ryan has completely vanished on this. Right. I, I'm just, I'm just sitting I'm, back. I'm rewatching it. I'm rewatching it right now, and <laughs> I'm rewatching it right now. Oh my god! You got it right. You got what I'm oh, talking about. God, everything. And then, and then when the lips on Krang Prime start tingling oh, like that, do you, do you get what I'm talking oh, about? Oh man, come on! Oh my god! <laughs> And then it turns blood, bro. Oh my god. And then it cuts to black with April screaming. Yep. I was just like, I don't know how I feel about that scene that I just watched right now. Oh man. There's there's mind in the gutter. And then <laughs> there's this. Ryan, you go back and watch that scene. Don't act like you don't know what I'm talking about. I I well, I'm not watching it right now, like Alex. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, I, uh, I will. Let's. So I will try to keep an open mind next time I watch it. Just for you, Darby. Just uh, don't watch it with Jess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but also, I did find it kind of weird that when they showed up to save April, like all it took was Wrath kick to the head to like. Stop them long. Stop the Krang long enough for them to rescue April. Yeah. Uh, so let, let me let, let me say a couple quick things here. Um, I I I'm okay with the character design. Um, that that that's fine. Uh, you know, like Alex, you were saying, it's it's better than the '87 series version of Krang Prime. Um, uh, the the thing I'm a little confused on is the fact that um, all of a sudden there's one Krang that can speak English uh, and speaks English to the other Krang right at the beginning of the episode, I guess, of the mm-hmm. first half of the two-part season finale. Uh, so that was kind of weird. Uh, I Just right away, I was like, what, what, wait, why is this one speak English? Um so that was kind of weird. And and I don't know if even if, if they had chosen another voice, if it would make it a, a difference for me. You know what I mean? I don't I don't think it was necessarily her voice that was giving me any sort of, uh, you know, downer or anything. But it, it was more just that it spoke English and fluently. And for some reason, all of the other Kring don't. Well, um, it's Crane Prime. Yeah. Yeah, it's Crane Prime. She, Crane Prime had access to like mind stealing abilities that the other Crane apparently don't. Yeah, yeah and she married Tom Arnold. So that geez. also will teach you English. Uh, the the I, I I you mentioned the uh, the little tentacle lip thing I, I did notice that I could not not notice it uh, like I, that's all I was doing just staring at Krang is it a her are we calling Krang Prime a her or is are, are, a... are we gendering uh, I don't know if we can get really uh, apply a gender to Krang Prime yeah asexual asexual I think Ase- asexual is it asexual yeah, yeah. asexual yeah. okay I think so uh, so sh- uh, maybe I don't know Shin- I mean. It was performing hentai, it's so it. I don't know. It's an it. So there's it. two things though that I really liked about that. Also, not the <laughs> hentai, but um, oh, okay. <laughs> one, one, Donnie finally got like the admiration of April in that quick scene. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. And, and then when they're trying to escape, two things about that. 
Um, they're trying to escape. One, Don is carrying April throughout the entire ordeal and yeah. is actually ahead of the turtles the entire time. Which shows me when it just comes to April, Donnie is the most B.A. turtle out there. Like, I think if April was on the line, he would just destroy all three of the turtles if he had to. Also, number two, um, where was, oh, I watched that chase scene, and to me, it just screamed video game. Mm. Yeah. When, the, yep. when Crank Prime was chasing them, and they're jumping from platform to platform to platform, and the room is, like, rotating, I was like, that just screams video game right mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe it'll be another <laughs> update to uh, the uh, the uh, iPad game, which, uh, by the way, which they updated. So yeah, they did update say, it. Who plays that? Right, yeah. Well, maybe it's just some people are getting on just late or whatever but uh they did update it so i can play on my my old ass first gen ipad but it doesn't get past the first level it crashes every time <laughs> how, they, how, how is it they don't like test this stuff before they do this? Look, like who has an old ass original ipad a lot of uh, people do man I do. I do i use it but i use it as a book yeah, uh, me too. Yeah, not as a that, not, that that's it though. It's I, it's running I, iOS five, man. I know. What do you, what do you know. want them to do? I don't know. Well, why even put it out? Even why even put it out on, <laughs> yeah. on it if it doesn't work? Because it it didn't originally. It didn't. It didn't go. Okay, we're getting off track. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> surprise. Yeah. Well. Um, drink. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Got off track. Drink. <laughs> oh, drink. Uh, Donnie's totally trying to feel up April too while he's carrying her. By the way, no, he's not. The bow oh, staff is with the bow staff. With the bow staff? Are you kidding? You want to talk about hentai? Wait, You're hold about on crank? here. We're talking about hentai with. What are we you know, talking about? His bow staff. He uses his bow staff to support her butt while she's on his back. Yeah, yeah, and and, and in the process, pressing. Her chest up against his shell. I'm just saying. I'm looking at it right now. How else are you going to carry her if you're running? I don't know. I'm, I'm, platforms. I'm just saying. It's 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 very clear to me. Like if I was April, I'd be on to him, but I'd be okay with it. Well, yeah, he's only saving your life, and you, and you just swooned over him and said, "My hero." So, like, I think she's okay with it. Oh yeah, until Casey comes. I was about to say that too. It's like until yeah. Casey shows up. Yeah. Uh, do you guys have any uh, any criticisms of the uh, of the one finale? thing? I'm one thing I'm kind of upset about because mm-hmm. we talked about it on the last episode. We were told that the crane ship was going to drop mutagen all over the city. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, I was waiting Thus for it. Giving us an explanation as to why there are mutants everywhere. Yeah. So we still don't have that explanation as to why there are mutants everywhere, except that maybe the Krang is experimenting on them and they get away. That's all I got right now. Yeah. Right. Uh, for me, uh, first of all, as an aerospace engineer, uh, oh. to see them oh, flying around so in those with, uh, with a couple of uh, desk fans as propulsion, uh, I, I mean, that's this is a situation. I know it's obviously I'm, – I'm, I'm an aerospace engineer. I'm going to notice okay, how many stupid little things like that. I know. I know. Get it. You're an aerospace I engineer. Know. We're massive failures while you're a success. We get it. But also, <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm yeah, saying kind of that are. little yeah. things like that, it, obviously, it's it's going to be point zero 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 one percent of the, the Are you honest to God crowd? Right now? No, no, no. No, 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 no. <sighs> are you honest to God right now complaining about the realism in a – cartoon show where there are walking talking turtles that know ninjutsu and english and there are creatures from another planet it took me out of it took me out of it it took me out of the it took me out of the situation where not 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 the whole technodrome (laughs) being from another dimension no um one uh God. There's a difference between sci-fi and like silly, you know. Uh, what I no, mean? no, actually, <laughs> no, there isn't. Have you seen Sharknado? Have you seen Sharknado? <laughs> no. <laughs> I know a little bit about Sharknado. Not yeah. science nonfiction, Ryan. It's science fiction. <sighs> yeah, you need to let that go. 
Ew. Okay, okay, so when, we'll, fine. When, Let that one go. When desk fans are like, you know what? No, I'm saying when desk fans are the one thing you have to complain about. I think that wasn't the only thing. Stuff. So the no, second check, thing, check be, no, no, no. as no. A, as a Raph fan, of course, I, I noticed things specifically about Raph. Uh, the, only the 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 very end um, yeah, when they land. they escape, they land in the water, and they're like, Leo, oh my gosh. He didn't make it. Oh man, boy! I, I if if he were around still, I I'd do it differently. And Leo's like, "Oh, you would." It just I don't know. It didn't. Dude, his brother just died. Yeah, just exactly. Died. They should. He should be a little bit more upset about it. Yeah, I agree with that. I I, I guess that oh. would. It was should just, have been a little was... bit more emotion, but you, I mean, you yes. can't judge them necessarily yeah well, you, and you can't judge too much on that either because i mean they just they just got out i know and, and like, they I, just I, they probably like, there wasn't even really any seconds. time there wasn't any even there wasn't really any grieving time given it's like exactly. oh man he's oh no he's just swimming right up to us in like two seconds well okay here's one, the... one one question though that i need i need answered like desperately i think alex might agree with me on this okay um okay so General Trag was there. Yep. What does that mean about Leatherhead? I thought about that too. Mm-hmm. I did. I did. Uh, I don't know. We don't know. We. I, I thought he was going to show up at the end uh, at some I was point. Would. When the portal uh, opened, I, I was hoping that's when Leatherhead was going to show I up. I thought too. that uh, Metalhead was going to play uh, more of a role rather than just being in the great, great dancer. The, great answer. Well, he can do the robot pretty well. Yeah. Um, yeah. See, okay. Oh, you know what? No, no, no. You know what they did with Leatherhead? Ah. And I actually, I no, not Leatherhead, Metalhead, but I like this. Yeah. They did the same exact thing in the 03 series that they did in the 2012 series. In the 2012, in the, in the 2003 series, when they invaded Shredder's building, Donnie had a remote control turtle van go in and attack the ground level until they finally realized the turtles weren't in there. Mm. And then that's exactly what they did in this series. They had the shell razor barge in, only this time Metalhead was there to attack that as a big distraction. So, I thought that was a nice callback to the 2003 series. That's a good point. Um, going back to the the dance scene, it's mm. is fine that they had it. You didn't but, like Raph dancing, did you? No, no I don't blame you. It was awful. Okay, it was fine. Fine. Raphael's the worst dancer. I'm Absolutely fine with that. Is. I'm fine with that. Uh, of course, the if best. I, however, if I had to choose between a a more emotional, you, you know, know what it was, you know what it was. It was the Empire Strikes Back. Oh, not the uh, Return of the Jedi. That's what it was. <laughs> it was the end of Return of the Jedi. We defeated the giant floating enemy <sighs> fortress. Let's have a party where we dance. <laughs> we needed some Yub Nub in there is what yeah. we really needed. Uh, yub, uh, I think Yub Nub is trademarked, yub. so they couldn't do it. Um, no, if, if I could trade that for uh, some some uh, even just a few more seconds of – of uh, some sort of emotional Rap response, over Leo, just death. just something, you know, just a, a cup, even just a couple more seconds. Of I, I get they were running out of time, so they had to kind of speed right oh. through that. But I don't know if they had just put it, just left us with. I mean, Leo was gone for what uh, seconds. five seconds. Yeah. yeah, like oh he's gone. Oh no. Oh he's back. Hey, all right. Uh, you know, I don't know. It, that was that was just something I was like. It, it just it could have brought me to another level, but it didn't quite. Well, yeah, it, it, it definitely the, that that ending scene wasn't all that dramatic. Yeah. I mean, the technodrome just crashed in the water and then sunk. He's a turtle, so if it sinks, of course he's, still he's okay. a yeah, exactly. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but Donatello, I didn't even have time to Donatello think about it that it. much. The the. The very first episode of the 87 Ninja Turtles when he said, oh, no, we're going to drown. Oh, wait, we're turtles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. 1987 when that was brought up. So Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's – so let, let's – okay, you just mentioned episode one. Let, let's – let's. we're not going to go through every single episode 
episode no. by episode. We won't I do that. Not. But let, let's let's try to look at the the, big the season picture. as a whole. Okay. Okay. Um, my two favorite things about the first season, I'll tell you straight up right now. Mm-hmm. Leatherhead is number two. I'm like my favorite things about the first season. Number one, the new incarnation of the Rat King. Yeah. Straight up, my favorite thing about this new series. Oh, by the way, I uh, I saw Rat King at uh, at Target. Nice. I have to get him. Yeah, yeah. so do I. Um, uh, yeah, that, so that's, it's out, it's out that's, there. That's my number one. The new reincarnation. The new incarnation of a uh, of Wrecking. Absolutely phenomenal job. Phenomenal job. Um, and uh, even though that I think one of the best things about it, besides like the new look that he has, they even had him as a villain before he became the Rat King in an earlier episode. Yes. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So like yeah. we kind of knew who he was before he became the Rat mm-hmm. King. They, uh, let's see, is is that the only instance? No, the, I was about to say, um, where we've we've seen a character before and after. I mean, obviously with Bradford and Zephyr, we got mm-hmm. to see them prior to their mutation. Um, uh, Baxter, I guess we did get to see some evolution of his character as well. Uh, I, right now, I'm I don't like Baxter. Neil is like he, he has such a high standard to follow after the two K three series that it's yeah. like. Well, I mean, the two K three series in the comics, know, and the, and the fact that we already know that they're going to make him a fly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Wait, I, 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 I say I still say keep an open mind with with Baxter. In oh, my I am. Opinion. But yeah, yeah, I, I'm with you on that one, for sure. I didn't think Baxter was nearly as formidable as he should have been. Well, we we thought that from from day from from the first episode he, he when he made his appearance. Exactly. It was just sad. <laughs> oh yeah, it was sad, man. <laughs> and not 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 like an awe sad. It was just sad. Like you know, cousin got you know went to jail for the fifth time, and now he's out on parole and doesn't have any money, and he's begging for money out in the street corner, and you know, nope. give him give him blowies just to make ends meet. <laughs> Man, that kind of sad. That, that's pretty sad. Yeah. Um, let's uh, let let's go through uh, the characters as, since we're since we're on that subject. Um, uh, so April, I think we're all cool with. Uh, with this version of April, I think we're all sure. we're all on board. Yeah, um, no, it, I mean, I was a little hesitant at first before the series ever came out when they said she was going to be a teenager, but then it made it kind of made sense since she is going to be hanging out with the turtles and their teenagers as well. Yep, yeah, she's she's better than Megan Fox. So <laughs> anyone's better than Megan Fox. Um, let's see the uh, well. Splinter, we've already talked about. Um, I like this Splinter. Am I like the only one who genuinely? No, 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 likes absolutely this not. I love this Splinter. Splinter. I was just, <laughs> this Splinter makes like wise cracks and stuff, and he and he just awesome. he just legitimately beats the crap out of the turtles and makes he, no apologies for uh, it. Absolutely, and he he actually might be my favorite character of the series. Wow, he's a good one. He's he's so amazing. Um, and and what about Karai, man? I like this Karai too. Mm-hmm. I, do. I do. I really like this girl. Like, there's, there's no character that where I thought in the series so far where I thought, well, this incarnation was better. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, turtles aside, like I didn't mm-hmm. think like the '87 Shredder was better than the current Shredder. Yeah. I mean, they're all different in their own ways, but. Like, I thought this Splinter was better. I thought this Rat King was better. I thought this Leatherhead was a very good one to start with. Yeah. He's very similar to the 03 one, but I didn't think, like, oh, the 03 one was better. You know what I mean? Yeah. The the 03 one, he doesn't have the whole fly off the handle. You yeah, know. he does. Well, he does, but he can control he it. He does Remember? so much that they have to give him his own section of the sewer. Like, yes. you're a leatherhead. This is where you're going to live. But he, he's still, like, this version of Leatherhead, there is no normal ver- Like, No, there's a normal one, and he's pretty smart because yeah, he, he yeah, knows how the crane works. If he you knows remember all the 2K3 version, though, I mean, he was, like, a doctor. Like, 
you know, maybe over this time, one is. we he, haven't seen him that much well, over time. Well, maybe he will we eventually get to that one point, epi- but... two episodes. Yeah. <laughs> well, we don't know where he's at now. Exactly. That, that yeah. kind of scared me. Um, I love it. I like this general drag over the other general drag. <laughs> It's certainly different. That's that's for sure. His uh, scale, his scale alone. Yeah, they uh, they. This is a situation where they use the same name, but it it might as well have been a totally different character. Yeah, uh, it's yeah, it's made out of rock, and so it's named Drag, and the, and it's from Dimension X. That's the so only thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Yeah, but the other ones they could talk. You know, they were they were smaller in scale. They used, you know, they had guns and everything. And God, right. you know, you know who I'm looking forward Laser to, guns. and I hope I hope they make an appearance soon, at least in the next season. Hmm. The new Trinos. Uh, You've been saying that for a while now. Uh, well, you're, dude, you've always been you, a new you have, have you read the comics with Zach the new neutrinos? And... I haven't read those yet. No, exactly. Wait yeah. till you see the new neutrinos in the IDW comics, and you'll yeah, completely but... understand. Yeah. Why I want them around so They're, much. Th- that version's not going to be in here, though. I'm sure that, but maybe an in between between the 87 and the IDW, I'll be completely happy with that. Mm-hmm. Call up Zero, let him know. I know. I'm sure he's I'm, well aware. <laughs> I'm sure they'll make a. Uh, I'm, I'm. I'm almost certain they'll make an appearance because I mean they are. No, they're fan favorites. They are fan favorites. Oh, absolutely. If there's, if there's one thing I can say about these guys making this show is like they know their stuff. Like Absolutely. they haven't made a they haven't made a reincarnation of a character yet where I was actually like really disappointed about it. Okay, so let's let's talk about let, let's go through the list then uh, for reincarnated characters. We've got Leatherhead, we've got Mutagen Man. We're going to have uh, Casey Jones. Um, we don't have him yet. I'm just going about what we have right we, now. I mean, April and Splinter, I guess you could say they're reincarnations. Sure. Um, uh, Shredder. The Turtles are reincarnations. Yeah. I like the, like the Turtles. I'm telling you, like, when you rewatch the 87 series like I was doing while watching the new Nick series, you just understand, like, the 87 series, there's, like, very little personality difference in all of the Turtles. Absolutely. So to watch yeah. the Nick series, it's like a breath of fresh air. It's like, oh man, there is differences between them besides their headband colors. Yeah, well, and they had it in the sometimes. 2003 series too. <laughs> well, yeah, and then that's that's you know that's what we tend to do too is compare. We compare this series with what we've seen already. It's it's human nature for a turtle fan to do that. Uh, so I mean, I wish I didn't. I wish I could just watch this totally objectively and not compare it to anything else. But, uh, I mean, I'm sorry that those other series were, you know, have been ingrained into my soul. So I, I, yeah. So, I mean, uh, okay. So we've got Oroku Saki. Uh, that's a reincarnation. Karai is reincarnation. Uh, I like that. I like this shredder. The shredder's like, yeah. He's not as scary as the O3 Shredder, but he's still pretty freaking scary. Uh, the foot. Um, Krang. I like this. I guess you could say Krang Prime, I guess. Uh, well, no, I would say the Krang, too, because they're really reincarnations of the Utrams. Right. Uh, purple Dragons. Um, I'm waiting for Hun. That's, like, probably the one. Yeah. Disappointment I have is like the purple dragons. Okay, where is like a Hun like character? Yeah, yeah. Where's where's that? Maybe he'll show up with Casey Jones. Who knows? That makes, a- that makes most sense. Yeah, if, if he's going to show up, it'll be uh, right before or right after Casey. Um, let's see. We've got uh, Baxter Stockman, Mousers. Mm-hmm. Okay, I don't like this Baxter. So so far, to the yeah. other ones. So yeah. we'll have to wait. Uh, Rat King. Love it. Like I said, like my favorite thing about this series so far is the new Rat King. I'm hoping he makes more than just one appearance in the next season. I'm sure he will. Well, I don't know about more than one, but... We got Trag and... Metalhead. Metalhead. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah, not yet. Not yet. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, really we were, gonna, we were about to yet. say Slash. Right. 
Right. But uh, not yet. I guess. I mean, we we as we reported. Um, yeah. yeah. That he's Speaking coming. of Slash, have you guys been reading the the City Falls storyline at all? I'm not that far yet. I'm I'm uh, I'm getting there, man. I'm getting there. Well, you see now. You guys were just talking about the purple dragons, and I was getting confused because I was I was. Uh, well, not was. I guess it was a little while ago, but uh, when I read the issue with uh, Casey and um, oh, what's her name? The the Angel? girl Angel. Yes, thank you. The uh, the girl, the younger female that's in the Purple Dragons that Casey is um, friends slash acquaintances with. Uh, that you know, she is in that. Uh, She's in the comics. And so yep. I, for a second there, I was getting confused. I was like, wait, did I see that in the comics or did I see that in the show? But it was the comics. In the show, she's like 10 years old. Well, in, in the 2K3 series, yes. But I'm saying in this series. She hasn't been in this series at all. Um, the, yeah. the Purple Dragons have just been just thugs, essentially, um, in this show. Um, mm-hmm. So that's all of the reincarnations we have. Uh, so far, um, all of the all of the other characters we've seen have been all new. Um, uh, do you guys have a favorite? Well, I guess you, you said you had a um, Darby. You had a you, you mentioned a couple of favorite characters. Uh, and Alex, you were thinking Splinter. For me, um, you can't say Raph. No, I'll, I'll try to pick one away from the turtles like you did. It's such a homer if you pick Raph. No, I know. <laughs> I, I know. Um, man, it's tough. Um, it's certainly not the pulverizer. No. no. Uh, <laughs> we've already it's seen like when, when they made him be... Ninja Man, I was like, thank God I have a reason to actually give a oh, yeah, about this character now. I They're do like Cry. And I. Right. I, I, I mean, Cry is awesome. Yeah, he's it, definitely it, a good one. Yeah, it, it's just that I I look forward to her character, the development. The, yeah, yeah, developing yeah. even more. Absolutely, uh, and you know it's going to. Oh yeah, I mean oh, that's what season two is going to be. Wait, sorry, never mind. I changed my mind. Carlos Chang O'Brien Ngambe. That Which, is my by favorite. the way, is the best name. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> that is my favorite character. He's so great. <laughs> and I, I will note on How Wikipedia, it does not have the Gambe. It only has Gambe. How many it, nationalities can we squeeze into one name? <laughs> that guy's <laughs> name is Brian Gambe. Yes. <laughs> they don't have the click but between O'Brien and Gambe. Uh, so, um, how about a favorite episode? Do you guys have a favorite episode? Uh, yeah. The um, the, the, the episode two of the uh, season finale yep. solely just just because I mean it's just because of that fight scene, mm. just because of the fight scene. Yeah, Darby. Um, I genuinely like the Rat King episode. Yeah, yeah. that was one, one of the better story uh, st- stories in, in, of the season. I think as far as the plots go for for an episode, um, more so than than episode or a season uh, episode two of the season finale but yeah the metalhead one i like too there was just like it, the reason why i couldn't place it as like my favorite was because like the scene we talked about ryan where krang takes over metalhead and they're just hacking away at metalhead instead of the krang sitting right on top of metalhead's head yeah not being protected at all yeah i'm going to talk about that <laughs> yeah um for me Actually, uh, and I'm, uh, I don't know why. I mean, maybe it's just because uh, I like I like The Walking Dead, but uh, uh, I really liked uh, Parasitica. Mm-hmm. Um, that was a good one too. Yeah, and it was interesting because it was a Mike centric episode. I guess it was Mike uh, days the day. But yeah, yeah. but I, I don't know. I liked it. I. I uh, yeah. It, it was definitely you know like a like a zombie ish type of episode. It was a, and it was a one off. That that episode could have been anywhere, you know, yep. because it was the uh, the the wasp that you know, you know stung right. them and everything. And right. 
But uh, yeah, yeah, it was that was, yeah, that, was uh, that was good. I, I I enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed that episode. Let me. Um, well, I was gonna say I I have questions for both of you then. Yeah. Um, I want to ask. I'm gonna ask Alex first. What was since Leo is your favorite? What was your favorite like Leo moment in the show? Mm, Leo moment. Leo moment. Um. Oh man. There haven't been many, and I think that's the issue I'm having. Um, well, here's the thing about uh, – l- while you're thinking about it, let me mention this. Uh, the the one I, thing – I know like two of my favorite Leo moments. The, the, the thing with Leo in this series is uh, essentially the, the episode starts with him watching Space Heroes. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's some sort of lesson learned in the episode, and then Leo has to replicate that before the episode's over. Right. And that I happened my, my how many Leo times? Moment, I'm telling you, my favorite Leo moment, number one, easily, was uh, in, I think it was a new girl in town, or it, it was Karai heavy, where Raph is yelling at Leo, like, what's going on with this girl? Yeah. And Leo sits there. He's like, well, Raph, you see, um, there's this girl. And, and then just uh, Snake Week comes out of nowhere. And he's, and Leo just goes, oh, thank goodness. <laughs> that like, good. that was my favorite Leo moment. He just like, oh, thank God the villain's here so I don't have to explain this to Raph. <laughs> <laughs> and he kind of says it really nonchalantly, too. Like, if you, if you blink, you miss it. Yeah. Like, Snake Witch just shows up. You stole my fertilizer. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. <laughs> um, my, other, my other favorite Leo moment was um, when Leo and Raph were playing that hockey game that Raph won. Yeah. The and, then, and, then, and then April's like, hey, come over and look at this. And Leo just smacks Raph upside the head, like, out of nowhere. You know what? That's a. I'm glad you brought that up because what I really liked about that scene was that that connection between the two of them was probably the most like brotherly moment of of the series where it, it, they just seemed like they really pulled it off. And like when they sat down, I don't know if you guys noticed this, but when they sat down with April. And like yeah, Raph smacks Raph upside the head. Yeah, out of and then Raph mm-hmm. was just kind of like looking at him, like, "Man, what are you doing?" Like, and then he like looks back, and it's just something. It's off to the side. It's, it's really not, quick. Yeah, it's it's just a little a little touch, and and it's it's it really makes such a big difference. So I, I'm I was I loved that that little scene. All right, so Ryan, what was your favorite Raph moment then? Oh man. Um, I can't imagine there were many of those either. No, thanks. <laughs> you think of Raph in this series, there's got to be like a scene that just reminds you that, that you go to. Uh, there's, there's a couple of times where, uh, especially near the end of the season, where they were, uh, they, I can't remember what episode it was. It was near the end of the season where they were hiding behind the, uh, the car and and the, he says uh well, how many kring are out there and he's like i don't know like six or seven and well, there's like, eight of them I yeah, think. eight of them and and then giraffe just goes out there and just takes them all out i love <laughs> that I like thought, I, I like that part too that was yeah the, the the any it, it happened a couple times where i swear it just seemed like kind of like raf would just come in there and just like clean house and uh, well, that's the thing. I was like, why are they arguing over, like, what do we do about these eight Krang? They should be able to take them. And then Raph was just like, wait, how many are there? Eight? Okay. Yeah. And, of course, I'm a Raph fan. So, of course, I'm going to like it when he looks, you know, B.A. And he rolls in there and just, you know, takes people out. So I think business. my favorite Raph moment, I, I think I said it in an earlier episode. It was, like, in the first episode where they fought the Krang. And the Krang's reaching through the door. And I just thought, Raph, tear his arm off and use it to lock the door. And then that's what he did. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they just looked at him. And they're like, dude, you're really that is messed, messed up. up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's the, what did he say? He's like, uh. Like, you are seriously twisted. And he, he goes, goes thanks. thanks. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, yeah, I was like, just rip his arm off and lock the door. And then uh, that's exactly what Raph did. And he's like, what? <laughs> I can't say I would have done any different. 
I would have done the great. same thing. Um, what what about – now? so this was – this is this is something I wanted to bring up um, that uh, my wife Jessica I keep bringing her up uh, that uh, she actually had a problem with was some of the instances because she's she's a biologist she's a big animal person uh, so she actually had some some issues with like some of like the like I mean, animal abuse I guess for lack of a better term like the whole like Mikey with the the kitten and just like drops him off the side of the building and uh the you know like when they were you know zephyr before he turns into fish face he's there with the with the fish and uh i know it's a a bad guy i know it's a market but like uh they're at the you know they're there and the the butcher just like chops the fish's head off um well it wasn't so much those aspects but just you contrast that to the fact that whenever the turtles are fighting the Krang, which, by the way, are evil, that they're not allowed to actually hit the Krang. They are only allowed to hit the their robotic bodies. We talk about Mikey whipped out his nunchuck okay. and knocked out the first Krang that ever popped out on them. Okay, so there were three. Uh, the only I could only count if you include that one, then three instances of the turtles actually striking the crank. The re- if it's if it's not three, it's hardly any more than that. Well, yeah, I mean, it's the NFL rule. You can't hit, you know, you can't hit them on the shoulders. <laughs> Except the crank are in their stomach. Right, but... You know, <laughs> well, it, it's just... It might. It, I, the only thing I can think of it's like a standards and practices kind of weird thing where. Yeah, no, you, no, it's like the '87 series. You can kill the enemy if they're robots, but the living organism, no, can't, yeah. can't do it. Right. It's just aggravating. Um, I, that they that they aren't they they can't wail on the on yeah prime that these on that these prime are prime. yeah are you know violent uh, you know aliens that are evil and wanting to overthrow the human race and the turtles aren't allowed to actually hit them but they can drop a cat off the side of a building well it lands on its feet anyway yeah <laughs> it had bad vibes. who cares <laughs> there you go it was a stunt cat um it's good yeah stunt it, cat so it, it, that it, it, i don't know it, i just wanted to mention that for her for her because she was she in so that was that those two examples and that i think there was some more too but like she noticed that stuff a lot more than i did but you know when i was kind of asking her for her input at the end of it and uh she had mentioned a couple of things so i'm glad jessica is so concerned about the cg animals <laughs> well you know with the whole idea that this is supposed to be a show for kids you know that they don't you know she's like well i hope they don't i mean the the the, the just they're the, telling the kids of, it's okay i mean they're, to, they're mutated turtles yeah so i mean there's probably gonna fair, be... to be fair they dropped the cat off the side of the building because it was being a dick it was clawing the crap out of mikey it's a little kid like, sure. hey look cats there's an overpopulation problem yeah, with cats uh, anyway. especially in new york city man. Exactly. If anything, they're doing uh, New York City a favor. <laughs> yeah, oh, man. I I agree. So messed up. I mean, uh, I, I'm not somebody, saying that I would. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. I'm not you saying know. I miss cat. I mean, definitely orchard cats. I don't care. It's like, oh, oh, the cat. Uh, oh well. I um man. I um I accidentally killed a cat once. But I don't. You know. That has anything to do with this podcast. <laughs> that doesn't have anything to do. With it this was podcast. in the dryer, and I didn't know. Oh man! Yeah, <laughs> I've heard stories about that though. You're not the only person that's heard. Yeah, no, it's a... <laughs> I didn't hear. I, it was a full load. I couldn't hear. It. It's a very sad story because I, I actually like the cat. Completely distraught about it. I just I had to tell my mom. I was living with my mom at the time. I was I think I was like 17. I told her the cat. You know, the cat ran away. Wow. Right. I, I assume you're gonna edit all this part out. <laughs> By the that way, was... I the cat once. What? <laughs> hey, you know, let's, let's, it's a, uh, it's a it's human interest. It's a uh, re, you know friendly uh, reminder to always check your uh, your laundry for, uh, for yeah. No, see, on. we're we're promoting animal activism. Or there you go. yeah. Uh, 
So bringing on back here, uh, what about uh, – let's talk about Donnie and Mikey's uh, additional weapon features, for lack of a better term. Um, so – Never really used it. And well, Donnie and hardly Donnie. ever used um, – it was kind of used for a comedic effect when they tried to wake up Splinter by poking him with Donnie's mm-hmm. bum. Right. Mm-hmm. The Naginata, he hardly ever used it. It was more of a, a, a joke thing. Oh, he pulled the blade out once against the Stockman pod, yeah. which was promptly destroyed. And uh, and by the way, how many times in this series? Has his bow been destroyed? Yeah. <laughs> Let, Quite I mean, a few. And he's always complaining that he wants a you know an yeah. upgraded well, weapon. Well, here's here's the thing. This guy built Metalhead. He built the Shell Razor and the go karts and everything else. And he can't figure out how to make like a composite bow staff. You know, one made of Here, like carbon thing. fiber. You know why? You know why he doesn't make a composite bow staff? Because he made Metalhead as a better weapon than his bow staff. And then when push came to shove, he disposed of all of the Krang and Metalhead with his actual bow staff. Yeah. Pretty but BS. Then the next episode no, it broke again. Anybody can fight <laughs> futuristic robots with swords and size, with metal weapons. But if you just go into battle with a simple wooden stick and you take them all out, yeah. That's uh, pretty awesome. I think uh, I I don't know. They just they it, they went overboard with the with the bow breaking. I don't know. It just it just seemed weird. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mikey's never broke his reward. Well, okay, so you go to Mikey, and uh, his you know use of the let me see if I can pronounce this right, uh, Kusaragama. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's close. That's uh, that's as wide as you can say it. Thanks. The only problem, the biggest problem I had with Mikey's <gasps> additional weapon was you take these two nunchucks that are about I don't know two feet long. And then combine them into a 19-foot-long chain. Yeah. Well, I, I think the idea is that the chain is uh, wrapped up inside of the handle of one of the uh, of one of the nunchuck, you know, handles. I think that's what the idea. But either way, he used it quite a bit. Mm-hmm. He did a lot more, very effectively too. At some point, sure. Yeah. Um, uh, I guess a good balance. Um, I don't know. If I mean we're going back, you know, a couple of years here, but uh, what the initial idea was, because right they put a blade on it, but he hardly ever used the blade aspect. He always used the chain aspect all the time. Well, the blade kind of works as a hook too. Yeah, he used he right. used it as a grappling hook a few times. Right, it's that's really the only thing the blade's used for. So what? So now I think back to yeah. the original animated series when Mikey had to lose the nunchucks and switch to the grappling hook. So I wonder if that was influenced in here. Now, of course, he still has his nunchucks. It's not like they're taking them away. But I wonder if that's why they did that. Quite possibly. I mean, it's a, it's a Nickelodeon kids show, so obviously they're not going to use the weapons to their full potential. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, Leo would just kill everybody. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so. <laughs> oh man. Well, I mean, can you imagine? You know, all they got to do is stab each Krang in 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 the stomach. Yeah. There's actually a great uh, college humor did a video about it called "The oh, Turtles Actually yeah. Use Their Weapons." I saw that. That yeah. was a couple yeah, years yeah. old. Yep. Yeah. Let's see if I can find a uh, find the link for that, and I'll stick that in the show notes because it's definitely. Pretty awesome. <laughs> they just <laughs> what we can actually kill people with swords and size and okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it's it's uh, <laughs> well. It, that was the first time I'd seen that with Raph using the size and like the way they're supposed to be used. Yeah, gardening. Just yeah, <laughs> gardening <laughs> foot soldier faces. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he was planting rice. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, racist. No, that's what they're used for. That's why well, not. It's very racist of you, though. Let's let's talk that about a uh, making rice. Uh, man, With that's the what the side was used for. Is for the sides are all there. Man, all right. So season two is going to be starting up. 
uh, next month. Mm-hmm. Um, we knew that there was going to be this short turnaround, so that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, we know yeah, we only got... waited two months for the season finale. So. Yeah. Yeah. We've got, uh, which is very interesting that they did that because season two is uh, done. We, uh, we tweeted out a, a link to this uh, interview from uh, Comic Book Resources a couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago. I wanted to read uh, a couple of the passages here. Um, they're talking about the, the series. It was it was an interview with um, well, Ciro was there and uh, the let's see, Peter Hastings. He's the uh, the other executive producer. Uh, Darby's uh, BFF, Kevin Michael Richardson, was there as well. Still as... waiting to hear back from him, by the way. <laughs> Kevin, very upset with you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're having an argument. They're fighting. Oh, that's, that's cute. <laughs> um, and, uh, you know, everybody's favorite hobbit, Sean Astin, was there as well. Uh, whoa. What? Whoa. What? No? No. No, he was by guy? far the best hobbit. Oh no! Really? No, man. He was so this whiny. Is, oh, no. but you were so- what? No, come this on. This is not no. a conversation for this podcast. But I will put you in your place, right? The <laughs> booyaka Sean now as to <laughs> why Sean Aston was the best Hobbit. Okay. I don't know. Okay, how about this? Everybody's favorite Notre Dame football player. Did he um, actually play for Notre Dame? I mean, I know he portrayed somebody who played for Notre Dame, but I don't think he actually right. played. I mean, Sean him. Astin himself did not play yeah. for Notre Dame. Yeah. They played on the field. He was on the field in football gear. He was on the field. It's um, kind of like he's playing. He's for, football. For I still say Joe Montana is my favorite Notre Dame player of all time. Now. Mm. So, sorry. Uh, okay. Any quit, anybody? Let's, let's, let's. <laughs> Let's bring it back. All right. So this is this interview. Let, let, I'd like to read a couple of the passages here. All right. So uh, this is, um, I believe this is, is Ciro. Yeah, this is Ciro talking. Uh, anytime we're doing a new character, first we check into uh, on the comics, especially the early Kevin and Peter ones. Um, I, I love to look at the, the first 12 issues and then the Return to New York saga. I look at the stuff. Uh, all the time, including the micro series, the original Leo one shot along with issue 10 blew my mind. Uh, moving on, he says, uh, we're deep into season two. Uh, we're finished writing season two, a whole nother 26 episodes. And we're actually pretty deep into season three. Um, we have plans for season four and hopefully we'll be able to do that as well. Um, we know that the uh, they, they or they said that uh, the season one finale leads right into the season two premiere, um, story wise, not just time wise. Um, so uh, that's interesting. Uh, I mean, we've known that Ciro is a, is a Turtles fan. Um, we know that you know that that's one of the best aspects of this show mm-hmm. is that a turtle fan is is making the show. Uh, that's what worked so great with the Clone Wars as well. Um, so that's, that's really interesting that not, he's not just looking at the previous, um, you know, on screen versions of the turtles, but looking back to the original comics as well. So that's awesome. Um, and we know now where they're at in production. And, uh, uh, so then Ke- Kevin Michael Richardson, he says, uh, this shredder has a dark edge to him, uh, darker than previous versions. Uh, I, I don't know about that yeah, one. Well, so here, here. So listen, he says, uh, James Avery did an amazing job in the eighties show, but I think this is a little different. So now this kind of goes with what we've said all along is that, uh, I, I swear that, uh, <laughs> the people in charge just are pretending the two K three series just never existed. existed. Yeah. yeah and that cool. makes me so sad. Um, because you never ever hear anybody in any sort of high ranking position for lack of a better term mention that 2K3 series at all at all it's it's as if it never existed anything's darker than the 87 shredder jesus christ the my little ponies are darker than the 87 shredder <laughs> yeah. the care bears are darker than the 87 shredder 
that this is all true, which is the scary part. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he said was wearing a scarf and a jacket during winter. <laughs> and not just that, but when he would disguise himself, he would take a page out of the turtles book and just wear a trench coat. Yep. That's it. Yep. He still had a, and he would still have his mask on a lot of times. Exactly. exactly. That's why he's not disguising himself. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, so the, speaking of uh, Casey, uh, this was—I was glad to hear about this. He says this Casey will keep in line with this traditional role as a uh, rabble-rousing partner for uh, Raphael. So that's—that was—I was really happy to read about that because all we had seen is that Casey was this younger guy and that he was, you know, vigilante. Uh, looks like he may need to go see a psychiatrist because that's not rap at all, <laughs> right? But. It never mentioned any sort of relationship with Raphael, and as we know, it, 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 it should have been assumed. It, it, no, yeah, it should have been assumed when in the trailer for Casey Jones, it ended with Casey Jones saying, "I'll get you next time, Turtle." Yep. Like, who else is he? What other turtle is he talking to? But Raph. Right. Yeah, good point. Maybe Donnie, because he's going to try to steal Donnie's girl. I don't know. Well, he. I'm, pre- I, I'm pretty sure he will successfully. Yeah, no, no, no. It's not an incestuous bestiality relationship as it is with Leo and Karai. So oh. <laughs> it's just bestiality. It's... Exactly. Which is one less taboo than the two. Right. But I mean, if you're doing one, you might as well go, you know. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're, we're one taboo from a hat trick right well, now. With that, right? <laughs> oh, man. You really just want Leo to get that, don't you? Yeah, I mean, well, the only taboo we're missing now with with those two is hentai. Since we mentioned it earlier, I might as well mention it again. So, <laughs> I think the turtles are capable of that. Um, well, I mean, unless they're also related there? to the Krang, and then the Krang hentai them. I'm just saying, Leo yeah. takes control of you know Krang Prime suit and. <laughs> There's a lot of possibilities. We could play with this a little bit. I mean, we can put let's, it together storyboard or something. Let's play with this a little bit. Um, <laughs> We're going to go in that direction. <laughs> all right. Moving on. Moving on. Uh, this I was uh, really happy to read about. Uh, he says, so speaking of uh, season two, says they're, uh, the characters here, uh, the Turtles, the, the April, um, he says uh, they're going to get a little older. Uh, they certainly have a lot of experience after season one, and they confront a lot of different new characters, mutants and everything. Some, Neutralizer. Well, yeah. Mm-hmm. Some of the uh, old nemeses may or may not be around. Uh, the second season is going to end in a different place, uh, but they'll continue to grow and change. Ooh. So they won't be having a dance-off at the end of season two. But, oh, that, well. Well, but that brotherly wrestling idea between the Turtles is a fun dynamic that we'll continue to explore. So uh, I was really happy to read that. Nexus. The the uh, nice um, the I was you know it's funny because before I read this I was thinking about this I was thinking about because you know you go from the beginning of this series and the turtles have been inside the sewer their entire lives eating allergy or not knowing how pizza is pronounced yeah pizza? even though they had TVs. Um, yeah, it's well. That's a good point. What the hell? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Never, never put that, that together. Never crossed your mind that they have access to television, but don't know how pizza is spelled. Interesting. Or what a pizza is. Very interesting. Yeah. Uh, did they? Maybe they didn't get the TV until after they. No. 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 Because no, Leo it? was watching TV. Like episode one, Leo's watching yeah. it. Wow. Interesting. Uh, um. Yeah. That is interesting. I mean, maybe there's just there's no Domino's or Pizza commercials. Mm. Yeah, as, much well, as we know, those are the only two that movies. appear in the Turtles universe. Um, but be even be, just uh, ignore that. <laughs> uh, they they've def- <laughs> like they definitely have uh, grown a lot in in this season, and uh, I would be. Uh, I would be upset if that didn't continue. And 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 not just how uh not just, you know, their their mental capacity of experiencing the world, but you know, I expect April to grow, get older. 
I, I expect, expect her to get older and get an internship with Channel 6 News. Ooh. With yep. Ngambe. Yes, with Mr. <laughs> Ungambe, sure. Uh, um, I, I'm, I'm at number six right now, so I can't do the clicking sound with Gambe. So. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it, I, so I, I I'm, I'm really glad that that they said that that uh, that Ciro said that. So, uh, so moving on, uh, they said uh, uh, it's really organic. Uh, N- uh, Nieli said of how they choose to introduce more characters from the turtles world into the show uh this was really cool uh when i was reading this i was like what okay uh a lot of times (laughs) a lot of times we'll work on a story and realize say what we (laughs) we need a bat in here then the discussion becomes do we bring in wingnut or screw loose yeah well no darby that's when you're supposed to say yeah, exactly. <laughs> if we do, are we just filling the bat slot, or is this really a wingnut story? Let's think about it. There's exactly. no there's no set way we go about it. It just keeps folding into itself. We're, we're surrounded at the office by every iteration of the comics and the toys. There's always a visual totem there that we can refer back to easily. You can pick and choose what does and doesn't work. Awesome. Maybe Bugman will show up. I'm I'm hoping for uh, Doctor L Elephant right now. No, come on, it. man. You're a rap guy. Rap. <laughs> you don't want you don't want Ninjara or Mona Lisa to show up, D- dude. It. You don't want rap to get him some in season two. We'll get Venus before. Yeah, we get let's Ninjara. let's just go there, Darby. Let's just go there. Do you want to go there? Let's just bring Venus on in. Why not? You know why not? Because she doesn't exist. I don't know who this character hey, is. You all they, he just wouldn't said it they be have every actually, iteration. They, for some reason, they wouldn't it be something that Peter Laird... and she became Donatello's love interest? That, would, that wouldn't happen, and I'll explain why right off the bat. Supposedly, this character you all keep talking about that doesn't exist uses magic, and Donatello's a science guy. He's not going to be down with magic. Opposites attract, baby. That, no, uh... they don't. No, that, no, no, no. That not picture you tweeted out. Oh, My wife and me are a perfect example. She's attractive and I'm not. Opposite uh, track. That, what? <laughs> <laughs> I've had six beers. I'm going to stop before I get into trouble. So, uh, so that it was, <laughs> that was, that was really cool that he just pulls wing nut totally just out of left field uh, in this interview. And I'm sure the guy that was uh, doing the interview probably had no idea. Uh, who wing nut or screw loose for that matter. Screws. Yeah. Uh but uh that was so awesome that he's just you know, he can just do that. Um that yeah, you know, I mean for me that proves he knows what he's talking about. It's because Leo's in love with his sister, Alex doesn't mean Donnie can't get him some on the side or Raph can get him some <laughs> on the side. So one other uh one last thing I wanted to mention from this uh one last uh paragraph. Uh uh, overall, the focus of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles will remain on the characters first, with fan nods and mythology building off of that. Bam. It's always been the way Ninja Turtles have been. What? I, <laughs> I wanted them to just Except become... Except Michael Bay is involved. Well. Uh. I, I wanted them to just become what? real and then have the time to start filtering in the lesser but more... Or, excuse me, but important mutants. Yelly said, I think uh, fans will be happy that Casey shows up when he does. Throwing him in uh, at the beginning would have been a mess. It just uh, just would have been uh, now there's a, a fight because we need to sell a toy. I wanted to establish them as a love family. Love it. Love it. Love it. Bam. That's he good. called it out. Completely opposite from the 80s, 1980s uh, series. Exactly. Yeah. Mondo Gecko is now the neutralizer. Like he will not be showing up. He has been so, replaced. Well, you keep mentioning the neutralizer. He he talks about. I didn't include it in here, but he actually talks about uh, the neutralizer because that's a character he created himself. When the neutralizer like, just straight up ate a krang in its debut episode. Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, it did. It was awesome. Yeah. He just, he's like, so oh, you? Yeah. How can <laughs> how can the homeboy neutralizer eat a krang and the turtles aren't allowed to like hit him because with a nunchuck? Because that's the circle of life. 
Because th because so that's okay. If the turtles were to eat the Krang, it would be okay. Guy yet. Once he declares if he's a good guy, then he can't eat Krang anymore. Plus, plus he was Maybe. doing it for subsistence. So he yeah, was sustenance. eating him. He's hunting. He was, Alex. I said sustenance. I said well, sustenance. Said subs yeah, look at the tape. It, you said stuff. Look at the tape? <laughs> the I don't tape. know if looking at it will do any good. <laughs> Listening to it might. Yeah. We're going to listen to the tape. <laughs> and uh, uh, two, uh, might I quote. Two mark, sub let, me, uh, let me put this out onto a cassette tape also, and then I'll send it to you <laughs> via. <laughs> A-track, man. We're all old school. UPS. Anyway, he was doing it for sustenance. The guy needed to eat. He, he, he was being held captive for I don't know how long. Yeah, he broke out of a prison cell. He probably needed some food. <laughs> <laughs> it's different when an animal eats another animal. Look at Animal Planet. Yeah. <laughs> that, Look at I, Animal Planet, that, bitch. That, that's a vulgar scene. <laughs> oh, sh Nikes. <laughs> Man. All right. Well, that's uh, that's gonna do it for our our season two slash season. Well, I guess that season one, up, season two preview. Uh, <laughs> it was an awful way to end that rap. That was just awful. Way to wrap it up. You know. Uh, it, uh, all I can say is, out of this, I'm looking forward to season two, man. Uh, okay, get away. More, to it okay, let's put it this way: I was more excited out of uh, or look for season two after reading this than I was for uh, after watching the preview trailer that came on after the the finale. I was more excited for season two than I ever was for the Michael Bay movie. Well, uh, really, I, I mean, I think we were there a while back. The so. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go ahead and watch it. I'm sure you have already the season two preview, uh, trailer. It's like 45 seconds long. Um, uh, best part out of it for me, butt cannons. Butt cannons? It has butt cannons? You see the butt cannons? Yeah, it looks like Sully from, Mon from Monsters Inc. almost. It does kind of look like, yeah, that's good, good point. Um... So yeah, that that was that was the best part of of the trailer for me. They're, they didn't show a lot. The, it was it was mostly just little clips. They, they, there was no story, uh, you know, teasers really or anything like that. It was just random clips from season two. But um, uh, so let's hey let's get on to some uh, some listener feedback here. Uh, we we've got um, more. <laughs> We're getting more uh, listener feedback, so uh, I still yeah. don't know how that's happening. Definitely yeah. appreciate it. Um, we uh, we got sent a uh, a pic from Diego G on Twitter. That's uh, he's uh, at Ton Hoff nineteen eighty seven. Uh, sent us a cool picture of his uh, TMNT collection. Um, it's got all of the, uh, the the turtle classic figures with the you know twenty two points of articulation. Uh, those ones he's got the four of them and so, the classic uh, ones uh, yeah it's like the the original the 87 series turtles uh the classic figures that came out a couple years ago actually you know what i didn't even mention it i am uh recording in my newly finished turtles in star wars themed mostly turtles uh game room Oh, so yeah, it's out. it's done. And uh, I, what kind I, of games uh, do you have in there? I what's that? What kind of games? <laughs> uh, video games, video game room. This is where all the video game consoles are going to go. But uh, I I, just, I took a video and I'll I'll uh, I'll I'll send it out. I'll put it on YouTube and then I'll send a link out so you guys can check it out. We also got a um, a uh, uh, message from Tiger Claw. Uh, this is I guess would be categorized under retractions uh tiger claw he's he's a um uh poster he's on the technodrome forums and i uh, left us a message on our uh website turtlepowerpodcast.com and uh, he said uh i would like to see uh, oh this is going back to uh what episode from the original series that we'd like to see redone um so he says, I would like to see the episode from the original series, Raphael Meets His Match, uh, redone in the new series. Since Mona Donat Lisa. Yeah, so, yeah, see? Since Donatello has a crush on April and Leonardo has a thing for Karai, this would be a good opportunity for Raphael to fall for another female, particularly Mona Lisa, the female mutant lizard from that one episode. Salamander. Uh, 
<laughs> well, yeah, I guess. Uh, he does, and so this is the retraction portion. Uh, he says, oh, by the way, that news about most deaf as Baxter Stockman was fake. It was reported on a site that makes up news that geeks wished were true. And I guess the internet picked up on it. So that would explain why it was news to me. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. They, they ended up casting K. Todd Freeman, I believe, for it. Okay. So um, he's correct. Or, yeah. Yep. So... So definitely um, appreciate that. Wanted to let everybody know about that. Um, yeah. uh, Which, by the way, Kate Todd Freeman is a uh, is a pretty good choice. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, two positives. Uh, he's uh, definitely fits the role. Um, you may have seen him in The Dark Knight. He played Polk, um, but he's um, mm. he's black, so that's a good thing. Ah. Yeah. Well, that's all that's needed. Well, good. I mean. Let's look. I mean, it's, according to Alex, that's yeah. That's I mean, that's <laughs> I don't even I don't even know where I'm going. No, it's but. it's uh, good to see that they're sticking true to the uh, the character. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the the original intended version of the character. Yeah, exactly. So, um, K. Todd Freeman, you can look it up, look him up if you want to. But yeah, he's uh, it's a good choice. One uh, of the better casting jobs. The good. Message from uh, uh, Rochelle Norland. Uh, that's at Rochelle Norland on Twitter. Uh, said, uh, with respect to the season one finale, uh, she said she loves it. And uh, the actors did a very good job as their characters. And she can't wait for the new season. Um, yeah, we we didn't really talk about that. Uh, the voice acting. Uh, I mean, the finale, no different than the rest of the series. Amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, but, uh, sometimes the the less you talk about it just means that, you know, you don't have anything bad to say about it. So uh, it, it's definitely true for them because uh, they knocked it out of the park again. We got a couple emails as well and uh, wanted to share uh, some of the info from them. Um, got a uh, email from from josh gave us some some constructive feedback definitely appreciate it josh and uh uh it's interesting who you uh who you mentioned a couple times in your in your email as a uh uh a podcaster that you listen to a lot uh that's that's who i got to uh i got to be on his podcast one of them that's all i'm gonna say so so Josh knows what I'm talking about. Um, we do too, because yes. we don't. Yeah, oh. and uh, I know we know, but I was yeah. oh, okay. <laughs> I, don't, I, I didn't know. I realized we were trying to go for a sense of mystery here. We yeah, have a little no bit, a little bit. Um, yeah. And he also did say that he left us a review on the Australian iTunes. So. <laughs> Aussie iTunes. Nice. Thank you so much. Yeah. No, you're correct. Uh, I we definitely I can't see that at all. Um, so definitely appreciate you doing that. Uh, good job saying Aussie instead of Aussie. Very good. <laughs> hey man, my new my new puppy is half Aussie Shepherd. Man, I know how to say it. Good, good, good. They'll they'll appreciate that down under. <laughs> so one thing he he did st- uh, share with us here that I totally missed out on. Uh, he says, if you watch the e-comics on the Nick website for the four turtles alone in the sewers in Raph's comic, uh, he sees uh, Casey Jones rules graffiti all inside uh, with the husky with, with a hockey mask stencil tag. <laughs> Yeah, it's a husky with a hockey mask <laughs> stencil tag. So uh, that's really cool. I didn't know that. Uh, uh, that they uh, that they even had that still. So I, th- I thought we covered that before. Uh, with the with the uh, I know we talked about them months ago, like year ago, but I didn't yeah. it was I didn't know if this was still going on or what. So I'm gonna have to do some research and check and yeah. see if these are still available. Yeah. Um. Still good feedback. Yeah, absolutely, and. Uh, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, we can uh, meet up. Josh said he's coming over to the States in a couple of years, and I'm going over to Australia in a couple of years. So, uh, yep. I'm still going to hold him up. He said he'd box with me. So Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then we also got a... Uh, a That'll uh, go well. Uh, I boxed yeah. for seven years, so it might. 
Yeah, seven years, ten years ago. Yeah, Darby. By the way, he said uh, he he ain't making it to Denver. There's no there's no waves in Denver. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. Still, what he gives a shit it. about Denver. It's only like the <laughs> best city in the country. Um, we also got a uh, an email from uh, our fan uh, Jake. Uh, he Jake. First of all, he wanted to ask uh, if we picked up any of the new action figures. So, uh, as part of my room decoration, uh, I've got – I didn't – well, I got all of the turtles and shredder for the, the new ones. But uh, I went back and got uh, – so I did this cool setup, and I'll, 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 I'll take a picture of it too. Why not? Uh, so I've got a line of Raphael's. So I've got uh, original <sighs> Raph. We've got uh, astronaut raft, movie raft. Um, no, I'm talking just standard rafts. I'm not talking the. I do have uh, space cadet raft, but he's still on card in the bubble. Um, I was gonna say no. So I lined them up. I took them all out of the packaging. I've got so original raft, movie raft, two K three raft, TMNT raft, the. Uh, the classics raft, the uh, super articulated one, and then the new raft, all uh, lined up next to each other, and uh, I'm pretty pretty happy with how it turned out. So, um, so uh, he said he was able to get the uh, the four stealth tech turtles, uh, and he really likes them. So I've seen those uh, in stores too. Uh, they do look cool with the uh, with the the gear on. I, I thought that's actually what they were gonna do in the finale. I thought that that's what they were gonna go with, but uh, you know, because Raph was loading up, he was getting all that you know all that gear on and everything. But uh, it wasn't quite exactly the same thing. But uh, he says that they're a lot better than the Ooze Chucker uh, turtles. So, um, but uh, yeah, so. Thanks, thanks so much, guys, for uh, for sending in uh, some emails, and uh, uh, that's going to be it for for this episode of the Turtle Power Podcast. Just over two hours, not bad. And uh, everybody, thanks for uh, listening in once again. As always, you can visit us on our website, turtlepowerpodcast dot com. Follow us on Twitter at tmnt podcast. You can follow myself at Figdon Pat. You can follow Alex at. Oh, um, uh, what are we talking about? Twitter? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you weren't paying attention. At Rodriguez, A Rodriguez 2005. Follow, yeah, yeah. Follow me at A Rodriguez 2005. You follow great. Darby at Lobo. DTV. That was Puyaka shot great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can f- like us on Facebook. Uh, like I said, we do everything on Twitter, but it follows over to Facebook if if you're just on Facebook. Uh, Facebook dot com slash Turtle Power Podcast, and uh, send in your your feedback uh, via email as well. Uh, Turtle Power Podcast at gmail dot com. Uh, please, please, please uh, subscribe and rate us over on iTunes. Uh, if you, uh, have the, uh, the ability and, uh, just a few minutes to, uh, go over and, and help us out, leave a, leave us a great, uh, uh, rating over there and, and we'll definitely share that on the show. To the American iTunes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. No, and, uh, Hey, you know, on any of the iTunes, of course, if it's on one that's not American, unfortunately we can't see it over here, but you know, much we'll love. take your word for it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and uh, everybody, uh, make sure you guys go um, follow at Titan Pictures and on Twitter. Ah, good point. Um, yeah, they're. Do- uh, I don't know if, if any of you guys saw the uh, the first episode, but um, they basically are making movies with uh, Lego characters of the new Nick Turtle series, and uh, they're doing a pretty dang good job. So check them out; they're really cool. Uh. Let's see. We've got uh, a song of the show, guys. Do we? We 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 gotta have one. What are we doing? Uh, oh, I thought you said we had one. No, no. Man, I don't know. Skipping it's... stones. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I don't know if I can do that one. <laughs> All right, how about Turtle Rhapsody? Sound good? 
Turtle Rhapsody I mean, from... It's like you read my mind. <laughs> I mean, we haven't done it yet, so I guess it's all us. Turtle Rhapsody, that's uh, from the original uh, first movie soundtrack. Uh, this is the last, the last song, actually, on the uh, soundtrack. So, guys, once again, thanks so much for joining us. Guess guys and girls for joining us. No, oh, thank like you. You're thanking them. Terribly. For, yeah. They really, um, they're just listening. Thank you for listening. I'm going to let you guys do the outro from now on. Nobody's joining anything. Oh, man. This isn't a cult. <laughs> All right. One we'll talk to you us. next time. One of us. <laughs> Did we just end with one of us? Bossa Nova. <laughs>